What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. It's your man Jay. So in this video we're going to be talking about why smartwatches aren't worth it. Well, the majority of the ones in the market are not worth it. So, oh boy, I, I didn't do this intentionally, but I wear two smartwatches most of the time. Uh, and when I'm not wearing two smartwatches, I'm wearing like a really uh, nice casual watch or maybe a diamond watch or something like that. But the point of this video is not to slander the um, smartwatch world, but um, smartwatches just aren't worth it. A lot of them cost more than 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 phones or the devices that we actually carry in sometimes. Uh, and then they don't really give you the functionality that you could possibly need in a jam other than having LTE co connectivity uh, and being able to be away from your phone in an emergency situation. Other than that, folks, you know, I've never really been. I recently became a smart smartwatch person in the last three years or so. If you remember, I did not like smartwatches. I didn't see the value. Uh, there, there just wasn't, they, they weren't, they just weren't worth it. And even today, I don't think smartwatches are worth it yet. I think they're going up in price uh, and they don't really give you this phenomenal functionality that you, you really need. Most of the time, it's going to tell you to open it up on your phone or continue on your phone or you just need to see it on your phone to respond to it. And that's probably 80 percent of the time or more. So with smartwatches today, they have very small screens. And um, I think the only smartwatches that are that are worth it are the fitness bands or the ones for fitness. And just remember, this is my perspective on this. You can disagree. I, I'm okay with that. I think smartwatches are way overpriced. No one's um, uh, safe from this conversation, uh, except for the companies that release a fitness band or a fitness watch, because they have the same functionalities as most of the smartwatches out today. And I'm saying smartwatch versus fitness watch. Fitness watch for me will win every time because fitness watches are normally light, lightweight, they they have the same color screens. They have you can respond to text messages. You if you can't respond, you can actually view them, because like I said, uh, most of the time you need to get get out your phone anyway. So I, if a smartwatch um, costs less than two hundred bucks or it is about ten to twenty percent the cost of your device, I could justify it. But when you have smartwatches that are Eight hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, three fifty, and your phone only costs like seven hundred or five hundred or some somewhere along those lines. Three hundred pixel squad stand up. Um, the smartwatch just isn't the way to go. Uh, and I think that after wearing the Apple Watch uh, here in my video on the Apple Watch video, I kept calling it the iPhone SE. People just really lit that up. I get it. I made a mistake and play it worse nonetheless. But I've been wearing the Apple Watch and the Pixel Watch as my primary watches. Now, even though I have Samsung watches and Amazfit watches, the Amazfit watches are the watches that I take when I'm going to be gone for more than a week or something like that. And I don't have to worry about battery and see. This is where smartwatches are a huge fail. Um, they don't have good battery. And the watches that do have good battery life, more than likely is some kind of GPS watch or a fitness watch. Or, or, or that's the predominant uh, crowd that the company is looking for. This is why companies like Amazfit, that, okay, smart, smart watch of the year for me is the GTR4, period. Let's just throw that out there. Jay, why don't you wear it every day? I, I just told you why I don't wear it every day. I, I wear that watch. First of all, I want to keep it in pristine condition. And I wear that watch because I'm, I'm also trying to get a new band also because that band is a little t a little snug. But the point is, watches that that um, cost a lot of money and don't give you long battery life, it's not a good purchase, folks. It's just it's not a good purchase. Getting two or three days out of a smartwatch, okay, that's cool. But how much did the smartwatch cost versus your phone? So here's an example. I'm wearing an iPhone watch and it's actually, well, it's affordable. It's more affordable for me from all my military and government discounts. So I didn't pay a lot for this watch at all. This SE, this is second generation SE. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't pay nowhere near what everybody else paid, but this is still probably the best option for the majority of the world that wants an Apple watch. So when it comes to Apple, 
I always recommend going for the lowest priced one first and see how that fits your needs. I think I don't know what Apple's return policy is because I don't normally return a bunch of stuff, but I'm sure it's got to be at least two weeks. So that gives you two weeks to decide if this watch, if the lowest priced Apple watch is going to be good enough for your very expensive iPhone. Because some people have that mindset that I bought a $1,800 iPhone, so I got to have the $900 watch or the $1,800 watch. Apple sells watches that are $20,000 or $18,000 or something. I think I've looked on and seen some more than 10, I'll say, which is stupid. That's just, just, just stupid, folks. That is stupid. People who promote this, don't listen to them. Take that 10 grand and invest it. Buy a little piece of property if you can and do something other than spending it on a smartwatch, which is really a dumb watch when you think about it. But start with the lowest cost smartwatch if you're with Apple and see how it fits your needs. Buy you a nice case for it. Get you a nice band. Make it your own. You know what I'm saying? Make it for you. And, and then just don't worry about what you think it's not doing. Just use it as you would regularly use it to, to, to do your day to day task and see how you feel about it. If it's not enough go up to something else. That's all I can tell you. Now, when it comes to Google, since this is Google's latest um, offering to the smartwatch world, and I say latest because they bought out Fitbit. Uh, I'm, I I got Fitbits, but I'm not a fan of the software. It's too clunky and sluggish on the watches. So I'm glad they brought this watch out. However, every, no one's exempt. This watch is priced really high when you think about what it's bringing to the market. That's why I said it's a good first attempt. It's a good first attempt because the software is great. I love the software on this watch and battery life when it's on the Bluetooth. This is the LTE model, but if it's on Bluetooth for me, it's been lasting for a few days now. So when you when you think about value here, if I did have to pay $299 for this watch or $350 or whatever it is, and I got a 6A, I'm paying more for my watch. So is it really worth it? Nah. And even if you're buying the Pixel 7 Pro, or the, or the most expensive Pixel, this watch is still pretty much a third of the cost. And I might have to open my phone for a lot of the things that I want to do. So this is, again, my personal opinion on this and my perspective on this. This is why I'm saying smartwatches are not worth it. Now, you're talking to someone or you're listening to someone and watching someone who has a boatload of smartwatches. And every time I do a video on a watch that costs 30 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, and pretty much all it does is track your fitness, your heart rate. You can see text messages. You can see phone calls. People complain about that. But in reality, most of you cats are not getting your money's worth with the ton of money that you spent on these watches, man. You're just not doing it. I don't believe that you are because most people have to open their phone, like I said, to actually get things done. The watch will even say continue on phone or open on phone. So it's not too smart. OK, so I can control things. I can set things by voice with both of these. And most of the smart watches that I have, I could use them for voice and command things. But eventually uh, you sometimes you get a message saying your phone needs to be paired by Bluetooth and blah, blah, blah. First to work from Google, it does. So even though it's already paired. So I, I feel like for me, the best part of a smartwatch is fitness and everybody has their own needs. I remember I work out every day. So fitness for me is important. Tracking things, being healthy, eating right, you know, doing these things. Everybody's going to have their own reason why they have a smartwatch. But if you're buying a smartwatch, just check notifications, and things like that. Folks, you're wasting your money. You might as well, in my opinion, you're wasting your money. You might as well just get a fitness watch that costs a lot less or just a tracker they cost a lot less. Even some of the ones that don't have a screen and you need the app for it, because a lot of the times those are going to be really affordable and you can monitor everything. The reason those are really great is because they last on battery 30 days, 45 days, two months. Some of them, you know, now the king of batteries on smartwatches before I move forward is going to be a maze fit. No one is topping a maze fit for battery life. And then the maze fit software is actually phenomenal. You can jump from device to device without resetting your watch. And that, my friends, is one of the best features of any smartwatch. I do not like resetting in my smartwatch when it comes to um, uh, changing my phone out because I switch phones a lot. And with a maze fit, you don't have to. It keeps everything synced on the app. And as long as you link up, it's going to link in with that watch and you keep it pushing. So Amazfit isn't exempt either because they do have some watches that are very expensive, but they offer more watches that cost less 
than $100 than probably any other major brand out there. So it's going to be up to you to determine whether you think smartwatches are worth it. Currently, right now, I don't think smartwatches are worth it. I think that they are way overpriced for what companies are pushing forward to say that it's beneficial to the consumer. So when a consumer is looking for a smartwatch, I think they really should be looking for on the fitness side to really help determine whether or not they're going to get the benefits of the entire watch. Now, even if price is not a thing for you, you still have to be smart. Most of us have credit cards that we have, you know, money in our savings account. We don't just go out and spend it just because smartwatches to me. It's like that, like people used to say that, you know, buying an, an iPhone is a flex or they think they're better. Well, in my opinion, if you have a very expensive smartwatch, that's your real flex. It's not your phone. It's your smartwatch is your real flex if you're into technology. Now, if you're not into technology, then and you just bought it just because that's still your flex, especially when your phone costs about the same. So. You're not getting that much functionality out of these little screens at all, folks. It's not happening. You can try to convince me in the comment section, but they are they are not worth it, in my humble opinion. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that chime in to pick out reasons why it's worth it. But the cons on smartwatches, in my opinion, definitely are outweighed. Uh, They're not outweighed by the pro. The, the cons outweigh the pros on smartwatches, in my opinion, because as soon as Google dropped this watch, instantly everybody said, oh, the screen's too small and blah, blah, blah. Okay, and you're absolutely right. It needs to be a bigger screen. Apple dropped this watch. You say, there's nothing changed. They're doing it to us again. So people know that these things are not worth it, but they still put the money in. So, and I respect that because it's your money and your purchase. Excuse my squeaky chair. Uh, this chair is comfortable, folks. I know it's squeaky, but it's comfortable. So when it, when you when you think about how you're buying uh, into an ecosystem. How important is the smartwatch? I, I think the smartwatch should be off the table or at the bottom of the list. There are to too many other things that you could use to get into or to say you're a part of, you have a complete ecosystem than putting on a watch. The watch is again, just that small flex to say you have it because you don't, when I, when I make phone calls on these watches right here, it's very difficult to hear. Uh, unless I'm in a really quiet area. That's the truth. So normally I'll have it linked to a Bluetooth when I'm in the grocery store shopping or something like that, whichever one I'm using, I'll Bluetooth it and have some music going. So if I do get a phone call, I know I'm just gonna, it's just gonna ring and I'm gonna hit it right away. Smartwatch speakers, microphones, they're okay. But when you see us testing them and you see people testing them, they're testing them in a quiet area. You can't have a phone call on a smartwatch in an area, even like if you're doing running water, washing dishes or whatever, I've done this before and I can't hear anything the person is saying. It just comes out. It, I, I mean, real world situations, folks, washing dishes and the water's running and you clinking things around, you're not going to be able to have a phone call and a, a good conversation with just using the watches themselves. It just doesn't work like that. So, uh, and if, if there'll be someone that says, oh, I do it. Okay. You must have the softest what you, you had the water turned down really low and you're dropping the dishes in the sink very lightly or something like that. I don't know. But will smartwatches ever be worth it? Currently, right now, there are a ton of smartwatches slash fitness watches that are worth it. I think fitness watches are the way to go if you just need to see your notification because that's pretty much predominantly what it's all about. I need to see what it is to determine whether I want to pick up my phone or not because that's, that's ultimately what you're doing. And the other scenario, here's some scenarios where I use smartwatches, I'm going to say. I, I tell my watch, hey, remind me of so and so and so on. Hey, set an alarm for so and so and so on. Hey, uh, what, what, read, the, read the message out loud or just whatever it is. It's not a lot that I'm doing on a smartwatch for smart functions um, that will, const con that will um, justify the price. So I can control my house some of the things in my house with the smartwatch. I can close the garage, set the alarm, things like that, check a few things, but you can't really do any major stuff on a smartwatch to where it's gonna be functional and beneficial to the consumer. It's just not there yet. So how much should smartwatches cost, Jay? Well, I think smartwatches should be under 200, under 200. And that's based on me having watches that are very expensive and not so expensive. And where they all meet in the middle is they all do the same thing and they do it all the same, period. There's nothing that different 
on a $29 watch versus a $800 watch, the difference is going to be people are going to say, well, it doesn't work with this and the ecosystem doesn't work and the text messages, I can't reply here, blah, blah, blah. Do I really want to reply to a text message on this little screen? Absolutely not. Might push the button to get a little smiley face or whatever, but I don't want to say I'm going to enjoy responding to full messages on a, you just, it's, it's, I know some people say it's a quick message. I get it, but it still is not ready yet. A bigger screen on a smartwatch is warrant. We need it. And then it'll constitute some bigger batteries. So then we'll give a person like, why is it a maze fit has the same size watches as everyone else and sometimes bigger and their battery life is two weeks to a month to even 45 days. Their software is right, folks. The combination of software, processor, hardware, everything is right. So you think about these things before you just say, I got to have an Apple Watch because I have an iPhone. An iPhone. I got to have a Google Watch because I have a Google phone. I got to have a whatever because I got a whatever. You know what I'm saying? Weigh your options out. And that's pretty much what the justification of this video is. I'm trying to lead you in a direction to where you don't have to believe that just because you have a device, you have to buy the most expensive watch or the smart version of a watch. Because as much as I don't like Fitbit, they did at one point have some really nice affordable watches because it's fitness, but it still did some of the things that smartwatches do. So right now, the only smartwatches I can confidently recommend and say you're going to get your money's worth are some of the Amaze Fit watches um, that cost under two. They because re remember what I said earlier, you don't have to change your phone or reset your watch. Amazfit watches when you're switching between devices. And that's something that a lot of people are doing right now. Most people have more than one watch. Just give it a try. I'm telling you. And, and I have the Samsung watches, the Apple watches, the Google watch, the whole. I have the entire Amazfit lineup except for the GTR 3 Pro. Um, but other than that, um it may even have a, has retro watches. It may even has little color screen watches, the BIP lineup that are like 49 bucks, folks, and they are phenomenal. Those are great gifts for people who've never had a smartwatch. They're going to love it. I've given them away before and the people are still using them. The battery life is great. They don't complain about anything and they love that watch. Simply put. So do you think smartwatches are really worth it? I mean, seriously, are they genuinely really worth it? I don't think so. It's your man Jay. We got enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.